It's my pleasure to introduce our upcoming DevOps leader who brings with him a wealth of experience and expertise in the world of technology and DevOps. With over eight years of experience in the field, our speaker began his journey as a DevOps engineer at Accenture, wherein he was a vital member of the Oracle Solution factory team. Throughout his career, he has been at the forefront of driving innovation and efficiency through DevOps practices. Prior to joining New Relic, wherein he currently works, he, contrib he contributed his skills and uh, knowledge to Singapore Press Holdings and Palo IT in Singapore, wherein he served as a DevOps consultant. Currently, our speaker holds the esteemed position of Technical Account Manager at New Relic, wherein he plays a crucial role in providing dedicated support and strategic guidance to the company's valued customers. Building and maintaining strong relationships with key clients, he acts as their go-to point of contact within the company, ensuring that the needs are met and exceeded. As an expert in the field, our speaker has delved into the realm of AI and ML tools, including OpenAI's ChatGPT, and has harnessed their power to drive innovation and deliver exceptional results. Today, he graces our conference to share insights on how engineers can successfully harness the potential of AI and ML tools, particularly OpenAI's ChatGPT. As we step into the era of intelligent automation, his expertise will be invaluable in guiding us on how to leverage these technologies to drive efficiency, innovation, and growth. So ladies and gentlemen, without much further ado, please join me in welcoming our keynote speaker in this track, the one and only Mr. Darshan Hegde, Technical Account Manager at New Relic. Hello all, good morning. Thank you so much for joining at the DevOps Asia Summit. I know AI and ChatGPT has been the flavor of the season, and thanks to our previous speakers, we have touched upon this topic multiple times already today. But I want to stress that even though there's a lot of hot debate on what AI is and is it good, bad, ugly, I want to just talk about how our DevOps engineers can successfully use it in our day-to-day -day activities. But before that, I just want to take you back to, you know, to the history. And I'm going to take me as an example, wherein I was just fresh out of college, joining as an associate in Accenture. And the first six months that I did was restarting the server manually and just providing updates in the morning and towards the end of the day, you know, whether all the services are up or not. And then it was more like a, I would say, a technical promotion wherein the next six months was deployment time, manual, by the way. So I started off with like more of a manual deployment for non-production. And by the time I reached like production deployment, we were kind of already considered that you're trusted by your manager and you can do better job and you're actually able to do production deployments without any downtime. My initial 18 months, it was like that, wherein it was manual installation and primarily I worked on WebLogic, WebSphere and Apache. So it was primarily like restarts, uh, deployments and manual setup on installation. And then I realized that, what was I doing? And I was hearing this word called DevOps, cloud, etc. And I definitely wanted to go into that. But during those 18 months, I realized that whatever the activities we do, it's all manual labor. We could have actually automated those stuff. I did some mistakes also during those times, so more of a human error. And at the same time, whenever there was any activities where we had to basically set up any infrastructure, etc., within a matter of a day or so, we were not supposed to do that, primarily because there was a process in place when we usually do like a first in, first out kind of a ticket, and the overall process would still take a week, 
or so. So if you see, I call that as an ancient days, and even I was part of that. Although it is just like a decade ago, we were still in the ancient era where the amount of time spent in doing these activities was like very high compared to the productivity that we used to bring to an organization. 2016, 2017 is where I saw a lot of traction for DevOps automation. Uh, CI, CD as a whole was already picking up, but IAC was something that was still niche and was actually you know, implemented by startups. But when it came to traditional enterprises, they were still playing it safe, I would say, and it was in, in, a, in a kind of an early adoption stage as part of you know, all these automation tools. So scripting was still important, but over a period of like five years, just before COVID, I would say, IAC kind of like shot up completely, and there are many tools in the market, whether it could be Terraform, uh, Pulumi, even the on-prem uh, providers like Ansible, Chef, and Puppet. So overall, if you see, I still call this as an olden days because during those five to six years, we automated a lot of things, but we brought on new complexities. There was a lot of efficiency upgrade, but new roles were created where even the infra was now called as DevOps. And they had to learn a lot of scripting skills, and they had to understand how cloud architecture works. Since last year, November, with the introduction of ChatGPT from OpenAI, all of this has kind of drastically reduced. The efficiency has increased. The amount of time spent on scripting has reduced. Scalability is the key right now. Nobody actually cares that you have to like take around a couple of days to actually do your job. Whether you're a manager, whether you're a non-technical person, as long as you know exactly what you want, you put it in the prompt, you're able to get the output. So we are in this new age right now. And it gets even better. So right now, most of, most of the folks would be like focusing on chat GPT. But there are so many tools in the market on, which is based on that, that you can actually use those AI tools to create presentations, to create images, even to write your resumes, and so on. Like, there are so many tools regarding that. And if you see here, I also want to say that majority of my slides today are also generated by ChatGPT. And I've used a couple of other AI tools to actually make it look pretty attractive and presentable. So, not only in, in pure programming or in your technical terms, you, you need to use ChatGPT, but if you have to, let's say, create a slide for a presentation for your management, or whether you have to update something on an Excel, whether you have to provide some sort of update, you can easily use all of these additional AI tools. So what is key right now? Learning is definitely there, but prompt engineering is definitely the most important aspect of AI. If you just ask a simple question to say, hey, I need to like find out what is going on with my system, the AI is going to give you a very vague answer. We call it as garbage because you need to be very specific. You need to learn what prompt engineering is. You need to optimize your questionnaire. What do you want? Put specifications into what is the output that you're looking for. And with that, you can become a prompt master. You can successfully you know, resolve issues. You can successfully implement any activities within a matter of hours or within a matter of minutes. 
instead of let's say taking days uh, to to do these activities now we created it so like it or not we have to embrace it so although there is a lot of skepticism as to whether ai is good or bad generative ai especially we are the architects of it we need to embrace change over a period let's say from late 90s early 2000s every decade has brought on some sort of a generative change and this is a generative change we have to embrace it we have to learn it and we need to adapt to all of these new ai tools the power of ai is in our hands so the way we use it that is how we are going to move forward with it but in all of this we need to make sure that we don't become like a ai or a robo where we lose our critical thinking you know we stop uh learning we just ask questions to the ai um so basically the most important part is that we need to avoid over reliance on the ai we need to still learn our skill set but at the same time we need to be smart enough to not be over reliant on ai at the same time we need to also make sure that the ai shouldn't guide you you should be guiding the ai so for example you may not know terraform or any of your scripting skills or iac right now but you may feel confident that hey i can quickly provision this i need not go to the devops team i'm a developer right now i just quickly use chat gpt or any of the ai tool and i can spin it up the problem with this is that you are completely over relying on ai you're completely over relying on chat gpt or any of the tools and you may set up your infra etc but you may leave the port open you may definitely not follow any of the security best practices and this may lead to disaster so we need to make sure that we are constantly learning all of our skill sets but at the same time whatever the questions that we ask in the ai or in the prompt basically we exactly know those answers to which means when chat gpt actually provides you that answer you should be able to still read that you should still be able to analyze whether that answer is correct or not and at the same time you need to also understand that we need to have some sort of a human trait because um i was just seeing the other day wherein um i was actually talking to a customer he actually provided a email which felt like it was written by chat gpt so if we are like more over reliance and if there is like a lot of a uh, lot of dependency on chat gpt to even write your emails or etc that's going to be a problem because in case of a normal human touch when you are actually like writing any specific message or specific email you need to make sure that you still control the narrative right now when you just ask like hey can you just you know provide me a template to you know write an email to my boss for so and so activity it's going to be like without any empathy without any emotion it's going to just quickly write but it's not going to have the same sort of effect when compared to you writing those emails so make sure that you guide the ai and the ai doesn't guide you we need to touch this topic so even though everything is positive at the end of the day privacy sovereignty and storage matters so when you're actually writing on your prompt you need to always make sure that you do not mention any of any human names which means if you want to write an email do not mention your boss name when you're actually like you know putting it in the prompt when you actually want some sort of a script or some sort of a code 
Do not put any company intellectual property. Treat it like a generic template, what you want as a script or as any of a piece of code. Do not copy paste from, let's say, your GitHub repo, put it on any of the AI tools, and ask it to solve an issue. So these are the things that we need to be careful about, because this AI, although you know, vendors would say that we're not using your data to train the AI, but it's pretty important that you do not put any sensitive data. And I think previously, like, you know, uh, the madam from CSA was definitely mentioning about ethics. We need to also make sure that we do not use AI for any bad actor kind of activity. So there are a lot of things that are happening because of AI, like deep fake. So we need to be pretty careful as to how we use it. And we should be using it for the greater good. And it shouldn't be for something like pretty bad or something as part of it. Now, I'm just reiterating uh, what is the key, you know, when using AI? Prompt engineering is the key. So imagine you have an issue right now. You have to define your goal, what you're trying to solve. You need to craft with precision exactly what is the requirement. Think of it like you're talking to a team member or your coworker, and you're listing down all the activities that you require from that coworker. Use that. Paste it in the prompt, see what is the output. If you don't like it, reiterate, refine your wordings, and then make sure that you provide proper context to it. At the end of the day, it's all about continuous learning. If you're able to define your questionnaire with this sort of a prompt, you will be able to get more accurate answers. You'll be able to resolve your issues quickly you will be able to deliver whatever is being requested from you. Now with this, I just wanted to introduce you to New Relic Rock. So we are an observability company, if some of you folks are not aware. And we are also you know, jumping on the AI bandwagon. And I just wanted to show you like a quick sneak of what we are building. And based on that, I'll also explain what are the activities we are doing to make sure that in terms of observability, how we can help the DevOps and the SRE teams much better. So this is a gen, uh, the generative AI uh, for observability. And we're currently still working really hard to get this live and get this available for all the customers. But I also wanted to just show a sneak peek of how it looks like. So the most important thing here is that we are using our docs to train. So phase one is to make sure that any questions any engineer needs to install, set up, create alerts, or create dashboards, we are using our docs to make sure that 
whatever the questions you ask here, it's able to provide step-by-step -step methodology so that you can easily set up whether you want to set up for your infra monitoring, your mobile monitoring, application performance monitoring, et cetera. So it's purely knowledge driven using our NR training docs. And as you can see that majority of the times you may want to do some sort of activity, let's say post office hours, or you're just sitting on your laptop and you know, trying to work on something which you need to finish. Instead of, let's say, asking the New Relic support team or uh, me in, in this case, which means we have a lot of TAMs and solution consultants, what you can do is you can still ask creative questions here on the prompt. It will be able to tell you what you have to set up, and you can actually even create those monitors. And of course, like if you see, this is like the latest one wherein um, if you want to understand any terminologies, like in this case, Abdex, what is Abdex, what is high response time, you know, how do we calculate error rate? And if you want any of these data and understanding of what this means, you can definitely ask it, it's able to provide. So the current timeline right now is by August 10 or by September early, first week, we're going to have a limited public review for the customer so that they can try it out. They can even see and provide feedback on this. Uh, the general availability still has time. But overall, I still wanted to show you that behind the scenes, from an observability perspective and from a DevOps perspective, we are definitely here to help. and. We are also on the generative AI bandwagon. I just wanted to give a quick recap, wherein we have come a long way, wherein late 90s, early 2000s was still not like, uh, was still very manual, I would say. The early 2010 is where the change happened, and it did continue till the end of 2020 or 2021. But now, there is significant change happening every month. And we need to be keeping up with all of those activities. So we have transitioned from manual to automation to AI. But within AI, things are changing quite rapidly. And we need to make sure that we are on top of this. We need to definitely learn the power of open AI and chat GPT. And the most important part is that we at New Relic are definitely embracing AI. And at the same time, we are being cautious of data, sovereignty, and making sure we respect the customer's privacy. With this, I want to end this session.